Hello everyone. In this class, we will try to learn about spinal cord lesions. Spinal cord transection can be divided into three types. Complete, incomplete and hemisection of the spinal cord. Complete transection of the spinal cord. The complete transection of spinal cord occurs due to the bullet injuries which causes dislocation of spinal cord or accidents which cause dislocation of spinal cord or occlusion of the blood vessels. The complete transaction causes immediate loss of sensation and voluntary movement below the level of lesion. Even though the higher centers remain unaffected, the spinal centers below the level of injury lose their function. The effect occurs in three stages, that is stage of spinal shock, the second stage of reflex activity and the third stage of reflex failure. In stage of spinal shock, it is the first stage of uh, shock and effects that occurs may immediately after the injury. It is also called the stage of flaccidity. The patient feels as if he is cut into two portions. Various signs and symptoms that develop during this stage are there will be paralysis of the limbs. Depending on the level of lesion, the paralysis of the limb can affect uh, can be of the following types that is hemiplegia that is paralysis of one half of the body quadriplegia that is paralysis of all the four limbs and paraplegia that is paralysis of both the lower limbs there will be flaccid paralysis because of the transaction the isolated segments of the spinal cord have lost their power of mediating reflex functions therefore the muscles are completely paralyzed so there will be flaccid paralysis. There will be loss of reflexes. All the spinal reflexes are markedly decreased or lost because of the injury to anterior and posterior nerve roots. There will be loss of sensation. All the sensation below the transaction is lost because of injury due to the posterior nerve roots and sensory neurons in the posterior grey horn. Then it affects various visceral organs where urinary bladder and rectum becomes become paralyzed, the extrusor muscle become ertonic, there will be retention of urine and constipation, the penis is flaccid and erection is not possible. There will be uh, venous return uh, get affected very much, uh, venous return is very much decreased, venous return depends on the muscle tone during resting condition, during activity it depends on the contraction of the skeletal muscle which is called as muscle pump. But in complete transaction of the spinal cord, muscle tone is lost and flaccid paralysis occurs, leading to decreased venous return. In addition, uh, the limbs are immobile and smooth muscles of the blood vessels lose tone. So blood accumulates in the lower limb, becomes cold and blue, that is it becomes cyanotic and uh, due to accumulation of the blood in the lower limb. The effect on the blood pressure. The effect on the blood pressure depends on the level of injury. Lesion anywhere below L2 segment, the blood pressure is not affected much because of the sympathetic vasoconstrictor fibers leave the spinal cord uh, between T1 and uh, L2 segments. Lesion or above T1 segment, all the sympathetic vasoconstrictor fibers leaving the spinal cord from T1 and L2 segments are transected. So that is completely cut off from the higher medullary cardiovascular center regulating uh, blood pressure. So BP fall occurs drastically. The mean arterial blood pressure falls below 40 mm of Hg. Skin becomes dry and scaly and bed sores may develop and no sweating in the region affected by vasomotor paralysis. Severity of the complete transaction depends upon the level of lesion. The complete transaction at the cervical region can be very fatal because the diaphragm and other respiratory muscles are cut off from respiratory centers. This leads to paralysis of these muscles leading to sudden arrest of breathing. In humans, stage of spinal shock usually lasts for uh, of at least two weeks. There is a functional depression of the nervous system and uh, this phenomenon is called as diasysis. Then the stage of reflex activity. This stage is also called as stage of recovery. After three weeks of period, depending on the 
depend depending largely upon the general health of the patient the reflex activity begins to return to isolated segments of the spinal cord first the functional activities return uh, that are the that are of smooth muscle urinary bladder becomes automatic similarly reflex defecation also occurs the next sympathetic tone of blood vessels is regained as a result of uh, result of which blood pressure is restored to normal at uh, rest but precise feedback regulation is absent and wide fluctuation in the blood pressure are common then the skin which has become dry and scaly now shows sweating again and it becomes more healthy then bed sores heal up rapidly and because of accompanying return of reflex activity of the skeletal muscle circulation through the limb is greatly improved and they become warm and good color third one is muscle tone the tone in the skeletal muscles returns slowly after 2 to 3 weeks the tone of the flexor muscles return first so that uh, now even though the both flexors and extensors are hypotonic the flexors are less hypotonic than the extensors the limb in this condition adapt to a position of slight flexion and paralysis therefore it is called as plara paraplegia in flexion then reflex activity reflex activity begins to return after few weeks of uh, return of muscle tone flexor reflexes appear first in the first reflex the first reflex which usually appears is the babinski's reflex that is babinski signs uh, positive mass reflex can be elicited in some cases by scratching the skin over the lower limb uh, or the anterior abdominal wall this reaction constitutes spasm in the flexor uh, flexor muscles of both the lower limbs evacuation of urinary bladder and profuse sweating tendon jerks begin to appear initially the knee jerk returns then the ankle jerk the mass reflex can be utilized to provide paraplegic patients a degree of bladder and uh, bowel control patients can be trained to initiate urination and defecation by intentionally producing mass reflex with help of stroke or a pinch on their thighs then the, the stage of failure or reflex activity stage of failure of reflex activity as the stage of reflex activity continues uh, a time comes when a reflex activity is of stage 2 fails because of the degeneration of the neural tissue of the spinal cord below the lesion and uh, intercurrent infections once again there develops hypotonicity of muscles mass reflex disappears bed sores appears and again patient and patient dies though the reflex movements return the muscles below the level of injury have less power and less resistance the usually the general condition of the patient starts deteriorating deteriorating and in general malnutrition infection or toxemia causes failure of reflex function the reflexes become more difficult to elicit the threshold for stimulus increases mass reflex is abolished and muscles become extremely flaccid and undergo wasting coming to hemi section of the spinal cord which is also called as brown sequard syndrome the lesion involving one lateral half the spinal cord is called hemi section of the spinal cord it can occur due to the injury during accidents gunshot in injuries tumors etc symptoms of hemi section of spinal cord here autonomic functions are usually normal the other functional changes that takes place can be divided into three categories changes that seen below the level of lesion changes at the level of lesion changes above the level of lesion the effects in these places in these places differ on the same side and on the opposite side there are changes in sensory and motor function changes that are seen below the uh, lesion that is on the same side there might be sensory changes like fine touch tactile localization tactile discrimination stereognosis vibration sense kinesthetic sense that is sense of movement and position is lost due to the damage to uncrossed fibers of dorsal column tract pain temperature crude touch remain un- 
unaffected as the spinothalamic tract that is anterior and lateral carrying desensation cross to the opposite side and escape injury motor changes the motor changes resembles the effect of umn type of lesion due to the damage of the crossed pyramidal tracts these include spastic paralysis positive babinski sign loss of superficial reflex and exaggerated deep tendon reflexes the temporary loss of vasomotor tone due to the damage of the descending fibers from the vasomotor center in the medulla to the lateral horn cells this leads to dilatation of the blood vessels and fall in blood pressure since some fibers of uh, direct pyramidal tracts that is 15% of opposite side which end in the same side escape injury therefore some muscles on the same side of the lesion may not be paralyzed on the opposite side there there will be sensory changes like complete loss of pain temperature crude touch due to the damage uh, to the spinothalamic fibers which come from opposite side and kinesthetic sensation fine touch etc will persist because the posterior columns of the opposite side are not damaged then motor changes like uh, there will be either no paralysis or uh, paralysis of few muscles of uh, upper motor neuron type of lesion this is due to the possible involvement of direct pyramidal tract that is 15% of the same side when these fibers cross therefore uh, below the level of lesion on the same side there is extensive motor loss but little sensory loss while on the opposite side there is extensive sensory loss but little motor loss and this phenomenon is called as brown sequard syndrome this diagram shows the lesion and the involvement of the different tract uh, on the same side the uh, the dorsal column tracts are affected uh, the the f- uh, sensation carried by dorsal column tracts they are lost and the sensation carried by uh, the ventral and lateral spinothalamic tract that is pain and temperature on the opposite side are lost because they are going to uh, cross over here and there will be lower motor neuron type of uh, uh, injury it can be seen so that is the motor involvement involvement seen in the uh, in the same side the other half it is motor neurons are unaffected and this is called as brown sequard syndrome so here you can see if the lesion is on the left side so there will be involvement of there will be loss of touch of discrimination vibratory proprioceptive sensation and there can be uh, spastic paralysis because of the motor involvement on the opposite side there will be loss of pain and temperature sensation and impaired touch sensation at the site of lesion there will be total loss of all sensation and hypotonic paralysis this kind of dissociative anesthesia is called as Uh, brown sequard syndrome changes at the level of lesion on the same side the sensory changes like complete anesthesia occur due to the damage to the posterior nerve root posterior horn cells and uh, spinothalamic fibers which cross uh, to the opposite side then motor changes uh, like there is there will be complete lower motor neuron type of paralysis is seen due to the damage to the anterior horn cells complete and permanent vasomotor paralysis occurs due to the damage of the lateral horn cells on the opposite side sensory changes like loss of pain temperature and crude touch sensation due to the injury of pain fibers of spinothalamic tract which crosses horizontally in the same segment then there won't be any motor involvement a nil or very slight due to the damage to the, some pyramidal tracts of the same side then coming to incomplete transaction of the spinal cord so this type of lesion the spinal cord although the cord is severely uh, injured few tracts escape injury and are not cut the stage of spinal shock uh, it is identical with that of complete transaction of the spinal cord the stage of reflex activity uh, where transaction of the spinal cord is irregular therefore some of the descending tracts in the ventrolateral column of the spinal cord especially 
the vestibular spinal or reticular spinal may escape injury and some connections persist between brain and spinal cord these tracks may mainly reinforce the activity of extensor group of neurons producing extensor hypertonia that is paraplegia in extension that is legs lie in extended at the hip and knee and toes pointing slightly downwards the characteristic characteristics features are all features are of upper motor neuron lesion is seen involuntary movements are relatively infrequent but when they occur involve an increase of extensor tone producing downward movement of the feet and toes the reflex movements the stretch reflex appears reappears first then the flexor reflexes appear some of the sensory disturbances seen tapes dorsalis in this condition degeneration of the dorsal sensory nerve root occurs it affects the fibers especially in dorsal columns and fibers which convey pain the disease is usually caused by syphilis some of the characteristic features are both sensory and motor functions are affected there will be numbness or paresthesia and lightning pain there can be atonicity of bladder there can be loss of position sense vibration sense uh, and passive movement so deep uh, re- tendon reflexes like knee ankle biceps triceps jerks are lost there can be marked disturbance of voluntary movements there can be loss of pain sensation particularly in the joints leads to deformity deformities of joints and there is no proper support and movements at the joint uh, and becomes uncontrolled called charcot's joint syringomyelia in this condition the gray matter around the central canal of the spinal cord shows excessive growth of neurological tissue with a cavity formation so this is in brief about uh, the different uh, disorders of uh, spinal cord section thank you